Hey everyone, Matt here. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm back at my friend's house. So this is the same friend that I helped with a front porch makeover a few weeks back. Some of you may have caught that video. If you didn't, I'll link it in the video description for reference. So you can see the plants behind me. They're looking great. But in today's video, I'm going to be tackling the front and back lawns, giving them some attention and a much needed refresh. I'll be overseeding them with cool season annual ryegrass. I'll be giving you the step by step process. So be sure to stick around to the very end because I'm going to reveal the fully grown in lawn. So let's get into it. So here's a quick overview of the lawn area. So currently it is St. Augustine grass, Bahia grass and weeds. The backyard is actually in worse shape. It's predominantly weeds. We'll take a look at that in a minute. So now that the daytime temperatures have cooled off, now is the perfect time to get outside and complete this overseeding project. And here's the backyard area. You can see it's patchy and weedy, but that's all gonna change with this overseeding project. This area is gonna be completely transformed into a lush, beautiful carpet of green grass. So this is the seed that we picked up. We got this 50 pound bag of annual ryegrass for about $60 at our local garden center. So this is more than enough to complete this project. If you're looking to overseed your lawns, I highly recommend that you check out your local garden centers versus a big box retailer. Typically, you can get a better price per pound. And the best part, whatever you don't use, you can save for next year. Just make sure to store it in a cool, dry place away from direct sunlight. So the first step in the process is probably one of the most important steps and that's prepping the area. So you wanna mow the existing lawn really short. So lucky for me, my friend has a lawn maintenance crew who already did that so I don't have to mow the lawn. And then the next step, you wanna get a rake and you wanna rake up any leaves and any tree debris. And this also helps loosen the soil so you'll have better seed to soil contact. It'll help with germination. So let me go grab my rake and I'll prep the area. So I'm all hot, I'm all sweaty. The hardest part in the process is done. Raking up all the leaves and tree debris is quite the workout. I went ahead and bagged all of the leaves and tree debris in the front yard off camera. I figured you probably didn't need to see me huffing and puffing as I raked everything up. And I actually broke my rake. You can see the handle split in two. So my friend is actually on her way to Ace Hardware to pick up a new rake so I can complete the project but luckily the next step doesn't require the rake so I can do it while she's gone. So the next step in the process, we're gonna be using a seed spreader to broadcast spread the seed all over the front yard. So let me go get the seed spreader and we'll jump into that. So this is my handheld seed spreader that I'm gonna to use to broadcast the seed all over the yard. You can see it's got this orange hand crank. When you spin it, it spins this gray disc at the bottom, shooting the seed out all over the yard. So there are five settings here, which control the trapdoor at the bottom. I'm going to use setting five, which completely opens up that trapdoor, releasing the maximum amount of seed, which is what I want for this overseeding project. So I'll go ahead and link this in the video description in the event you're looking for a handheld seed spreader for your yard. So as far as the process, I'm going to be making two passes on each of the lawns. I'm going to go north, south, and then east, west to ensure maximum coverage. So let's do it.
After I use the seed spreader, I will go in by hand and I'll just scatter seed right along the perimeter of all of the lawn areas. That way I ensure even coverage right up to the very borders of all of the lawn areas. And then I'll also walk around and I'll drop more seed in areas where there's really bare patches just to make sure that I've got really, really good coverage. Also, the new rake arrived. Hooray! So now that I'm all done with spreading the seed and I'm good with the coverage, I'm gonna use the backside of my rake and I'm gonna lightly go over all of the lawn areas to shake out any of the seed that might be caught in the grass blades to shake it down to the soil level. The most important thing with germination is seed to soil contact. So I'll do that really quick. Now that the raking is all done, I'm going to quickly use the push broom to sweep any of the grass seed off of the sidewalks back into the lawn area. So the next step in the process is to water the grass seed in. This will also help with seed to soil contact. And then moving forward, we're gonna to wanna to make sure to keep the grass seeds moist. So we're gonna to have to water a few times a day until the grass seeds germinate and become established. I recommend watering for about 10 minutes, three times per day in the morning, afternoon, and early evening. And then once the seed is germinated and is about one inch tall, the daily watering can be cut back to a normal watering schedule making sure that the lawn gets at least one inch of water per week. So it's best to water deeply once or twice a week versus more frequent lighter waterings. Watering deeply encourages a deeper root system once your lawn has established. And since everyone's sprinkler system is different and dispenses water at different rates, I can't recommend a set time at which you need to run your sprinklers for to hit that one inch of water for your lawn. But what I can tell you is find a container that's at least one inch deep and you can place that out in your lawn and then turn on your sprinkler system and then time how long it takes for that container to fill with water. And then you'll know how long you'll need to run your sprinklers for in order to hit that one inch of water for your lawn. And if you're having trouble finding a container that's one inch deep, I recommend using an empty tuna can. So now the next step in the process is to wait for the grass seed to germinate. So this could take about seven to 10 days, maybe a little sooner. In any case, I will be stopping by periodically to monitor and document the germination progress. All right, so we're back at my friend's house for the first project check-in. So it has been five days since I overseeded and there's been a ton of germination. Check it out. So there's been a ton of growth. We did have some light rains over the last 48 hours and I think that really helped keep these seeds moist. But I'm so happy with the progress, it's looking so good. And I love the vibrant green color of the annual ryegrass. It really looks good this time of year when the warm season grasses go dormant. So I don't know if you can tell on camera, but the new grass is well over one inch tall. So I'm gonna have my friend cut the watering schedule back to a normal watering schedule once per week. Let's go check out the backyard and see if we've got similar results. So here's the backyard. It's looking like a beautiful green meadow. What a transformation after only five days. So one thing I forgot to mention on the day that I did this overseeding project, always check your weather reports to make sure you're not gonna have heavy rains in the days immediately following when you overseed. The seed might not have enough time to settle into the ground and could wash away in the heavy rains. So in this instance, we had rain the evening of day four and then all day during day five. So the seeds had just enough time from when we overseeded until when the rain started for them to start to root in. So they didn't wash away during the rain. But overall, I'm really happy with the results so far and I'll continue to monitor their progress and I'll bring you along in the coming days. We're back at my friend's house for the second check-in. It's been eight days since the overseeding project was completed and the lawn looks incredible. Check it out, it looks like a meadow. It's absolutely stunning. The color and texture is beautiful. Ryegrass is one of my absolute favorites because the grass blade texture is so fine. I mean, look at it. It's absolute perfection. And the backyard is looking just as good as the front yard. I can't believe this transformation took only eight days. 
So now that the new grass is three inches tall, it's ready for its first mow. So I actually brought over my classic push row mower and I'm so excited to get out here and give it its first cut. I highly recommend a classic push reel mower. It has a precision cut literally like scissors through paper, leaving the lawn in a great place to resist fungal disease. Reel mowers are low maintenance and environmentally friendly since there's no electric cords or gas to deal with. I actually did a review video of my classic push reel mower a few months back. I'll go ahead and link that video and the mower in the video description for reference. In any case, sit back, relax, and enjoy the next minute or so while I mow the grass and then I'll take you through the final step in the process. So the mowing is all done. I'm telling you, using that push reel mower on this new lawn was so satisfying. The next step in the process is optional, but I highly recommend it. And that's using a starter fertilizer. So in most places, you can apply the fertilizer after the second week, but here in Florida, it's recommended to apply it after 30 days. So this starter fertilizer is great. It helps the new grass grow thicker and fuller. I'll make sure to link this starter fertilizer in the video description for reference. So I'll be coming back here in about three weeks to put down that starter fertilizer. So I'm going to use the same seed spreader that I used to drop the grass seed when I did the initial overseeding project, and I'll use it to drop the fertilizer on both the front and back lawns. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you're going to try overseeding your lawn with rye grass. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.